possible by a grant from Mobile Corporation. house, old money, and good breeding, a brutal and bizarre murder. Perfect. Just the sort of qualities relished on mystery. I'm Diana Rigg. Albert Campion returns tonight to unravel police at the funeral. The author of the Campion stories, Marjorie Allingham, might not be as well known in the United States as Agatha Christie or Dorothy L. Sayers. But during the 1920s and 30s, the golden age of the detective novel, this powerful triumvirate kept readers spellbound. Marjorie Allingham was singled out for the depth her characters displayed. She, on the other hand, thought Agatha Christie possessed the liveliest intelligence and curiously avoided reading Dorothy L. Sayers, although they eventually became neighbors and friends. These women developed the detective story into a novel of social realism. Allingham was born in London in 1904 to a literary family. Her father was a successful editor, and Marjorie published her first work when she was eight. As a teenager, she was humiliated at school when an English mistress ripped up a paper she'd handed in, saying she couldn't possibly have written it and must be exposed as a cheat. Undeterred, Allingham went on to earn her living as a writer. Her first job was watching silent films and turning them into short stories for a fan magazine. Everything from the Nook of the North to the latest Valentino picture. Occasionally, she wrote longer pieces, including an epic serial called The Society Mill Girl and The Eight Wicked Millionaires. The mind boggles. Most photographs of Marjorie show her as a large, 50-ish matron posing with her dogs, very English. But in her youth, she'd been a delicate Edwardian beauty, tutored on the proper way to enter a room, sit at a piano, and how to pour tea. Exhausting. This genteel background colors Marjorie Allingham's life of crime. Tonight's story, Police at the Funeral, written in 1931, begins in peaceful Cambridge, punting on the river, Victorian houses, but... There's malice domestic festering in the Faraday home. by a grant from Mobile Corporation. Campion is based on the novels of Marjorie Ellingham, including Police at the Funeral and Death of a Ghost, published by Bantam Books and available in libraries and bookstores nationwide. This is PBS. Many of Channel 8's programs are presented in MTS Stereo, innovative technology, made possible in part by the friends of Channel 8 and Valley National Bank. Coming in November, 
Bill Moyers examines the images that sustain our very culture in The Public Mind, premiering Wednesday, November 8th. Can you find the animals in this picture? No? Well, look closer. We'll wait. That was a trick question, because in Antarctica, the real action is under the ice. Giant sea spiders, marine worms, six-foot cod. Many of them have never been seen before. Trust us, they're all under the ice. Nature, Sunday at 8. If you did it right, you could skip a stone quite a long way. Now, you certainly couldn't do that to one of these. But with a bit of work and ingenuity, you could use them to build one of these. All the way to the other side, as a matter of fact. This is the London Bridge, disassembled stone by stone and transported from my home, London, here to Lake Havasu City. But if just one of those 10,476 stones had been left out, well, chances are you couldn't get from there to here, could you? Channel 8's lifespan has come to depend on the same principle. And your pledge is the keystone. So, if you've pledged before, I encourage you to do so again. And if you've never pledged, now is the time. Rush your check now to Channel 8 Tempe 85287. Remember, your pledge counts now more than ever. <laughs> Zarco Guerrero. As I grew up and began to draw, I always maintained an interest in the face, in portraiture, and in uh, caricatures. So I was always trying to capture the likeness of an individual or the personality of a particular individual. And uh, that, of course, is really what the mask is all about. I began at first just to utilize the images of the people around me. And then, as I was seeing masks used in ritual and uh, in ceremony around different villages of Mexico, the faces were the same. They were also uh, images that were taken uh, directly from life and uh, superimposed with creatures from the animal kingdom. collages of various materials. They're sculptural because they're modeled in clay or carved in wood. And they're paintings because they're painted in a wide variety of patterns and colors. They're multidimensional because they can be used in the performing arts with music, dance, and theater. So the mask for me is really the ultimate art form, the ultimate form of expression. As a mask maker, my main preoccupation is to make the mask, but to get the mask out, to have it used, to have it come alive, to give it uh, the chance to move, to breathe on a living human being. So I make my masks for that purpose, to be used for the uh, Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead festival that takes place every November throughout Mexico and in different parts of the Southwest and here in Mesa, Arizona. I want to see the mask become, once again, an integral part of contemporary culture. I want it to become a very effective form of communication and a means of uh, bringing people together and of fostering cross-cultural sharing and understanding. Culture is a way of expressing our humanity with the rest of mankind. 
It's a way of sharing, of giving of yourself and your experiences to others. For more information on the art of Zarco Guerrero, write to Arizona Art Forms, Channel 8, Arizona State University, Tempe, 85287. Arizona Art Forms is made possible by grants from the Marshall Fund of Arizona, Empire Machinery, your Caterpillar dealer in the Southwest, and Security Pacific Bank Arizona, providing personal attention and a network of banking services throughout the West. Friday nights, the compelling saga of a war-torn nation and its families. Experience the epic production of Heimat, Channel 8's foreign film special. Friday nights at 10.30. At 7.30, scrutinize politics with Paul Duke. Then at 8, Louis Rukeyser finds out where the money went. And at 8.30, newsmakers take the hot seat on the McLaughlin Group. Politics, money, and controversy. Friday evening, here on Channel 8. The day the universe changed is a voyage of discovery through the past and into the future. I'm James Burke. Join me for an amazing journey in The Day the Universe Changed. Join James Burke, Sunday nights at 7. Many of our most complex technological discoveries came from observation of the simple way nature works. In fact, I know of some buildings that would topple if it weren't for the way the bones of birds are at the same time light yet strong. Let me show you what I mean. First, we use thin skeletal struts to put together a series of triangles and then join them up. When any load is placed on that structure, each and every member working in combination with all the others shares the load. That's what architects call a truss. And it's the best metaphor I can think of to explain precisely how Channel 8 works. Friends of Channel 8 create the structure that supports quality television. With their pledges, they help to share the weight of what it costs to broadcast the very best. That's why your pledge counts. Rush your check now to Channel 8 Tempe 85287. Remember, your pledge counts now more than ever. Lend your support to quality. Many of the programs you see on Channel 8 are made possible in part by membership contributions from the Friends of Channel 8. This week on Sneak Previews Goes Video, the home video release of a restored epic masterpiece from director David Lean, and the re-release at a new bargain price of an outrageous comedy with Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton, and a 40-year-old gem based on an Ayn Rand novel, now newly rescued from oblivion. And then two important new films opening this week at theaters, including an historical drama with Paul Newman and the latest from Woody Allen that also features Alan Alda and Martin Landau. Welcome to this week's edition of Sneak Previews Goes Video. I'm Michael Medved. And I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Many of the programs you see on Channel 8 are made possible in part by membership contributions from the Friends of Channel 8.
Can we determine what makes one human being different from another? If we can, we might be able to eliminate disease. But are we willing to take the risks? It's, in a sense, the holy grail of genetics. We will have written out basically the hardware of how you construct a human being. Decoding the Book of Life. That's next time on NOVA. Tuesday at 8. This week on Masterpiece Theater. Suspicion takes its toll. Can you take the curse off me, Master? The conclusion of Precious Bane. This week on Masterpiece Theater. Sunday at 9. Eastern Africa isn't in the same place it was last year. The ground is shifting, and the locals are a little upset. In and around Africa's Great Rift, a rift that's breaking the continent, next time on Nature. Saturday at 6. Love, heartache, make-believe, and Old Man River. A Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein landmark in musical theater. Showboat, next time on Great Performances. The Showboat is coming Saturday.